doing, folks? It's Pawpaw again. A friend of mine, well, I, I count him as a friend, real nice fella. His name is Mo, and he has a, a, a YouTube channel called 65 Ford. And he took a high lift pallet jack, and he uses that for a workbench. And I thought that was so cool. I started looking for me one. I couldn't find one. Well, I'd find them, they'd be $900. Oh, hell no. Oh, I ain't paying no $900 for them. And the idea is I wanted to be able to get, for example, I got a DR, uh, a DR field and brush mower over yonder. And I hate trying being down on the ground on my old knees and all that trying to work on something. Or riding lawnmower. Lord, what a pain in the rear end it is for an old fat man to try to work down there ankle height. When you can bring, bring on up where you can sit in a chair and do your work. So, you know Pawpaw, I like doing it cheap. So I found this, they call it a, they call them a pallet stacker. Because when the forks raise up, there'll still be feet on the ground. And you roll it up with the with the uh, pallet or whatever elevated, and you can go in there. You can stack it up on a truck, or you can stack it, you know, up on top of another pallet. The idea being that the bottom feet are always there, so you got to go under some. You can't just pick up a pallet that's on the ground if it's got the wooden strips across the top, because then you'd be trying to separate the pallet. But you get the idea. So anyway, old boy said, well, he said, the problem with it is, he said, I pump it and nothing happens. And he says, tell you the truth, I don't know much about hydraulic cylinders. He said, I've been wanting one. And he says, buddy of mine says, all right, well, I've got one, I'll see you. And uh, so this old boy gave $150 for it. And he started to mess with it, and he says, nah, I ain't gonna mess with it. So he advertised it for sale $125, almost 100 miles away. And uh, I called him up, and to make a long story short, he loaded on his trailer, brought it halfway, and I met him halfway, and he took a $100 bill for it, but I gave him an extra 30. He had his granddaughter with him, little little girl, cute as she could be. I gave him an extra $30, and I said, here, got to pay for your gasoline, and you got to get that little girl some ice cream. <laughs> and he thought that was funny because his granddaughter had asked for ice cream earlier. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to see if we can't get this thing to work, and then I'm going to lay me a platform on there if I need to, to be able to work on lawnmowers. And, Go cards. Anything that I don't want to be down on my hands and knees doing. So we'll be back. We'll see if I can accomplish anything at all with this thing. Okay, now what I'm going to do first is the simplest things first. I want to make sure that we've got fluid in the cylinder because ain't nothing going to jack up if you ain't got no fluid in it. So I'm going to check that first because it sure would be crazy if a feller took this thing all the way apart only to find out it didn't have fluid in it. So a lot of this you're about to watch probably going to be fast forwarded because it's uh, no big deal. I'm just going to put some fluid in the cylinder. And uh, I took that right there. Got it right there. Okay.
Now, this is siphoning, but it's really slow. That's all right. I didn't get no oil in my mouth. Ha! We'll be back after I got some decent amount of hydraulic oil in this glass jar. I got a bigger piece of clear tube in here. All right, well, we got us a little bit of oil here. And I'm gonna put some in this detergent bottle. Paul, Paul, why do you save all that shit? Well, because I might use it for something later, that's why. Hold that right there. Now, I can take that squirt bottle that I didn't throw away and I can squirt it into that hydraulic cylinder. running out now so it ought to be full. Okay. So I know my cylinder's full of oil. Problem ends up going down here at the bottom to the pump. We'll be back. Okay, to let the jack down, you, you do this right here, you pull up on that, okay? And when you pull up on that, what's supposed to happen. What is supposed to happen is a little chain that is connected to that handle is supposed to lift up, lift up on this over here and make that right there push in, okay? Push in like that. And there should be a plunger sticking out. But that plunger is stuck inside which is telling this thing that if you pump don't lift because I'm pulling on this trigger to put it all the way on the ground so this is telling me that that little plunger is stuck so that's going to be my next step is to try to figure out what I can do right there <laughs> So, uh, get, see if I can get close enough for you to see what I'm talking about. See right there? Yeah, right there. There'll be a plunger. It'll all be sticking out. But you see a gap? It ain't doing what it's supposed to do. So that's the first thing we'll look at. Trying to get that plunger to come on out, and if it does, that might allow us to get some fluid into that hydraulic cylinder. We'll be back! So the first thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to take my super duper uh, penetrating oil that I make. Best penetrating oil you ever used, and uh, if you want to know how to make this stuff, 
go uh, go to my homepage and do a search for penetrating and it'll pop up anyway because this has not been worked on probably in a long long time if ever I'm gonna spray down spray it down some of my penetrating oil so that anything I start trying to lose or take take apart hopefully a <laughs> hopefully come apart Now I'm really concerned about that plunger right there. And I don't know what all it's gonna to take to get it out. I'm, I'm thinking maybe take something loose over here. I don't know. And I cannot find anything online showing me a parts breakdown of this particular unit. Like I said, ain't no telling how old it is. It is manufactured by Interthor, I-N-T-E-R, T-H-O-R, Enter Thor, and this is what they call a pallet stacker. Okay, so I've got it sprayed down, and for you, I'll be right back. For me, it'd be a little bit. I'm going to uh, find the wrenches I need to uh, start taking this thing apart and get some rags and stuff. So I'll be right back. Remember, what I want is I want that pin right there to come out. And I'm thinking it's just, you know, stopped up or the, or the uh, spring is, you know, got a bunch of crud around it and it's just stuck. I don't know. And to, your, and to answer your question, nope. I ain't got a clue what I'm doing. Oh, oh you know what you're doing? Uh, hell no, I ain't never done this before. Okay, okay, so before I get too carried away, I took a hammer and a chisel and I closed up this little pin here because it was flared out so it wouldn't slide out. I closed it up, tapped it in there, now that I'm going to try to take a punch and take the rest of the way out so I can get that little lever out of the way. And you're not going to be able to see me see it because I'm going to be right in front of the dead gun camera. Okay. You can see where I drove that pin out and I lifted that lever up out of the way. This is the roll pin. That was in there. Just had to press them things out. They just friction fit. I hate them. I'd rather have a bolt and nut in there, but that's what you get from a factory. Okay, so that's going to allow me to get that lever up out of the way. Let me move the camera around here so you can see what I'm going to try to do next. Okay. So I'm going to just lay this over here out of my way. There is a snap ring right there. And I'm gonna try to pull it off, see if that pin will push on through. I don't know if it will or not. May have to go from the other side, but all I can do is try. Woo, well, I didn't lose it. There we go. There we go. Now I'm going to clean this all up. Check it out. Oh yeah. Fluid comes out now. Ooh, I got water in it. I 
thing is get it where to slide in and out again. That was the problem. It, it, it couldn't come out that hole. It was all rusty. Get that cleaned up. Well, this is what come out of there. So we'll see what happens. So, cleaned this up a little bit and I don't have an Allen wrench exactly that size right there. I'm afraid of rounding that out. And besides that, I really don't know how it comes apart. I am assuming, and you know what happens when you assume, I'm assuming this nut twists off. But I haven't been convinced of that yet. I had trouble with it. But it's obvious to me with all these little springs in here and ball, you know, check balls and all that, that this plunger right here has got to come out in and out like that right there okay and it's stuck in there and I'm thinking it's just because of age and there was water in there and this one right here you may not be able to see the color one of them looks a little bit red like it might be that one. it might be that one right there looks a little red I don't know if it's from rust or heat but uh, I'm gonna soak this I'm gonna put it in a one of them uh, ultrasonic cleaners and see if I can't get this thing to loosen up. We'll be back. This is a uh, ultrasonic cleaner that was sent to me by GT Sonic and I'm just now having getting the opportunity to use it for the first time. And it comes with a cover but I just turned it on and I was amazed at the action that's starting in the air. You can't hear it, you can't feel it, but you can see it. Look at that. Look at that. Look at all that crud coming out of there. The solution I have this in, by the way, is just a bunch of Dawn dishwashing liquid and hot water. That's all that's in here. And I'm trying to... Look at that. I'm trying to get this cleaned up to where this little spring will pop out. So we'll see what happens. I tell you what, right now, I'm impressed. Also, this section, this white section lifts up off of the base where all the electricity is. So you can actually lift this up and then wash it out in the sink. That was another look at it. It's boiling that dead gum rust plum out of there. All right, well finally after all that cleaning using the uh, ultrasonic cleaner was able to get all this taken apart. Look at all those little pieces in there. And I guess I'm kind of fortunate that I was able to take it all apart and not lose any of them. And what I'm actually going to use as far as lubricant to put it back together is just mineral oil. Uh, 
this will be a, a thin film of it where it all slide together nicely and then we'll look at putting this thing back together if you recall when I took this out of the out of the uh, pallet stacker this was jammed this wouldn't work now look at it that's what we're after right there okay hopefully this all works Paul shickle titless, let me tell you. Right now, I don't have it full of fluid. I, I put enough fluid in it to make it work. And I pop it up until it don't want to go anymore. And then I put more fluid in it and it keeps going. So I know I've got to bleed the air out of it. Because it slowly, it slowly drifts down. But, if I'm using this as a as a lawnmower lift, <coughs> ATV lift, whatever. I can cut me a four before, and I can jack it up the heights I need and stick under there and let it drift down. Hell, that'd probably be safer anyway. Instead of relying just on the jack, you always want to have jack stands. But the thing of it is, I didn't pay fifteen hundred dollars for a pallet jack, and uh, so old Papa shickle titless. All it took was a little. You know, cleaning and scratching my head and just trying to figure it out. So, don't be afraid to try something, folks. Like I said, a new one's probably $1,500 and they give $130 for this one. Paying for the guy's gas and all. So, and little girl's ice cream. Anyway, as you can see, it drifts down a little bit. Slowly, slowly, slowly. But I can live for that for $130. Y'all have a wonderful day and a better tomorrow. Bye, everybody.